Moses, the prophet who led his people to freedom in the ancient lands of Egypt, under the shadow of grand pyramids and the watchful eyes of the pharaohs, the Hebrew people lived as slaves. For generations, they toiled under the harsh sun, their cries for freedom unheard. Amongst the towering palaces and sacred temples, their suffering remained hidden from the world, yet one man would rise to change their fate and lead them on an extraordinary journey of liberation. This is the story of Moses, the prophet whose life and legacy shaped the course of history. Around the 13th century BCE, in the bustling city of Goshen, a Hebrew woman named Jochebed gave birth to a son. It was a dangerous time for Hebrew infants, as the Pharaoh had decreed that all newborn Hebrew boys be drowned in the Nile to curb the population of the slaves. In an act of desperate faith, Jochebed placed her baby in a basket coated with pitch to make it waterproof and set it afloat on the river. She entrusted her son's fate to God. The basket drifted along the Nile, carried by its gentle current until it reached the bathing place of the Pharaoh's daughter. Moved by the sight of the crying infant, she decided to adopt him, naming him Moses, meaning drawn out of the water. Unbeknownst to her, she hired Jochebed, Moses' own mother, to nurse and care for him. Moses grew up in the royal palace, enjoying the privileges of an Egyptian prince. He was educated in the arts, sciences, and military tactics, but he never forgot his Hebrew heritage. His formative years were marked by a growing awareness of the plight of his people. The disparity between the luxury of his upbringing and the suffering of the Hebrews troubled him deeply. One day, as a young man, Moses witnessed an Egyptian overseer brutally beating a Hebrew slave. In a moment of righteous anger, he killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. Fearing retribution, Moses fled Egypt and sought refuge in the land of Midian. In Midian, Moses found sanctuary and a new life. He encountered Jethro, a priest of Midian, and married his daughter, Zipporah. Moses became a shepherd, tending Jethro's flocks and raising his own family. For forty years, he lived a peaceful, pastoral life, far removed from the turmoil of Egypt. Yet, destiny had not forgotten Moses. One day, while tending his sheep near Mount Horeb, he came upon a bush that burned with fire, but was not consumed. As he approached, a voice called out to him from the flames, Moses, Moses, it was God, revealing himself and commanding Moses to return to Egypt to liberate the Hebrews from bondage. Despite his initial reluctance and feelings of inadequacy, Moses accepted the divine mission. With his brother Aaron as his spokesperson, Moses returned to Egypt and confronted the Pharaoh. He demanded, Let my people go. But the Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he refused. Thus began a dramatic series of divine interventions known as the Ten Plagues, water turned to blood, frogs, lice, flies, livestock disease, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and finally, the death of the firstborn. The final plague broke the Pharaoh's resistance. In the dead of night, the Hebrews marked their doorposts with lamb's blood as a sign for the angel of death to pass over their homes. The next morning, Egypt was in mourning, and the Pharaoh relented, allowing the Hebrews to leave. With the Pharaoh's reluctant blessing, Moses led the Hebrews out of Egypt. Their journey, known as the Exodus, was fraught with danger and uncertainty. The Hebrews fled towards the Red Sea, but the Pharaoh, filled with rage, changed his mind and pursued them with his army. Trapped between the sea and the advancing Egyptians, the Hebrews despaired. But Moses, following God's command, stretched out his staff over the waters. A miraculous wind parted the sea, creating a dry path for the Hebrews to cross. Once they were safely across, the waters returned, drowning the pursuing Egyptian forces. This divine act of deliverance became a cornerstone of Hebrew faith and identity. The journey to the Promised Land was not a straightforward one. For forty years, the Hebrews wandered in the wilderness their faith constantly tested. They faced hunger, thirst, and the perils of the desert. Despite witnessing miracles, 
their spirits often wavered, and they longed for the relative comfort of their lives in Egypt. At Mount Sinai, Moses ascended the mountain to commune with God. He received the Ten Commandments, laws that would become the foundation of Hebrew society and morality. These commandments were inscribed on tablets of stone, symbolizing the covenant between God and his people. When Moses descended the mountain, he found the Hebrews worshipping a golden calf, a grievous sin. In righteous anger, he shattered the tablets and called the people to repentance. God provided for the Hebrews' needs throughout their journey. Manna fell from heaven to feed them, water sprang from rocks, and quails flew into their camp. Despite their frequent complaints and rebellions, Moses continued to lead them with unwavering faith and patience. While Moses was on Mount Sinai receiving the commandments, the Hebrews grew impatient. Believing Moses had abandoned them, they demanded Aaron make them gods to lead them. Aaron complied, and they fashioned a golden calf from their jewelry, worshipping it with revelry. This act of idolatry was a grave sin, violating the covenant they had just entered into with God. When Moses descended from the mountain and saw the calf and the people dancing, his anger burned hot. He threw down the tablets, breaking them at the foot of the mountain. Moses took the calf, burned it, ground it to powder, scattered it on the water, and made the Israelites drink it. He then confronted Aaron and the people, calling them to repentance. God's wrath was kindled, but Moses interceded on behalf of the people, pleading for their forgiveness. Following the incident of the golden calf, God instructed Moses to build the tabernacle, a portable sanctuary that would serve as his dwelling place among the Hebrews. Detailed instructions were given for its construction, materials, and furnishings. The tabernacle would house the Ark of the Covenant, which contained the tablets of the Ten Commandments, Aaron's rod, and the pot of manna. The construction of the tabernacle was a community effort, with the people willingly donating materials and skilled artisans crafting its intricate components. Once completed, the tabernacle became the center of worship and the tangible sign of God's presence with his people. The cloud of God's glory filled the tabernacle, guiding the Hebrews on their journey. As the Hebrews approached the borders of Canaan, Moses sent twelve spies, one from each tribe, to scout the land. After forty days, the spies returned with reports of a fertile land flowing with milk and honey. However, ten of the spies spread fear, describing the inhabitants as giants and the cities as fortified and unconquerable. Only to spies, Joshua and Caleb encouraged the people to trust in God's promise and take possession of the land. But fear and doubt spread through the camp, and the people rebelled, refusing to enter Canaan. As a consequence of their lack of faith, God decreed that the generation that doubted would not enter the promised land. They would wander in the wilderness for forty years until a new generation arose. During the wilderness journey, a Levite named Korah, along with Dathan, Abiram, and two hundred fifty other leaders, challenged Moses and Aaron's authority. They accused them of exalting themselves over the assembly of the Lord, Moses, distressed by the rebellion, fell face down and proposed a test to determine God's chosen leaders. The next day, each of the rebels brought a censer filled with incense before the tabernacle. God instructed Moses to separate the congregation from the rebels. The ground opened up and swallowed Korah, Dathan, Abiram, and their families, while fire consumed the 250 men offering incense. This dramatic demonstration reaffirmed Moses and Aaron's leadership and served as a warning against rebellion. As the Hebrews continued their journey, they camped at Kadesh, where they found no water. The people quarreled with Moses, accusing him of bringing them into the wilderness to die. God instructed Moses to speak to a rock, and water would flow from it. In a moment of frustration, Moses struck the rock twice with his staff instead of speaking to it. Water gushed out, but Moses' disobedience cost him dearly. God told Moses and Aaron that because they did not trust him enough to honor him as holy before the Israelites, 
they would not lead the assembly into the promised land. This moment of weakness and its consequence underscored the importance of obedience and faith. During their journey, the Hebrews became impatient and spoke against God and Moses. As a punishment, God sent venomous snakes among them, and many were bitten and died. The people repented and asked Moses to pray for the removal of the snakes. God instructed Moses to make a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. Whoever looked at the bronze serpent after being bitten would live. This act of faith and healing became a powerful symbol. The bronze serpent lifted on the pole foreshadowed the salvation to come, teaching the Hebrews to trust in God's provision and mercy. As the Hebrews approached the borders of Canaan, the Promised Land, God instructed Moses to view the land from Mount Nebo. From this vantage point, Moses saw the land flowing with milk and honey that God had promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. However, because of an earlier act of disobedience, Moses was not permitted to enter the land himself. Moses died on Mount Nebo at the age of 120 and was buried in an unknown grave. Leadership passed to Joshua who would lead the Hebrews across the Jordan River and into the Promised Land. Moses' death marked the end of an era, but his legacy endured. Moses is remembered as one of the greatest prophets and leaders in history. His life and teachings have had a profound impact on Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. He's revered not only for leading the Hebrews out of slavery, but also for his role as a lawgiver, a mediator between God and his people. The Torah the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, traditionally attributed to Moses, forms the foundation of Jewish law and ethics. His story is a testament to faith, perseverance, and the transformative power of divine guidance. Moses' leadership, marked by humility, compassion, and an unwavering commitment to justice, remains a model for leaders across the ages. The epic journey of Moses continues to inspire people of all faiths and backgrounds. His life is a powerful narrative of liberation, faith, and divine providence. From the infant cast adrift on the Nile to the prophet who stood in the presence of God, Moses' story is one of extraordinary transformation and enduring legacy. His message of freedom, justice, and covenant with the divine resonates through the ages offering hope and guidance to all who seek a better world thanks for watching